Welcome to the session. So in this session, we are going to discuss about the topic called passivity of metals. So what is meant by passive? Why are we discussing this in the concept of corrosion? So corrosion means we have discussed that decay or deterioration of a metal or an alloy in presence of an environment that is called as corrosion. So what happens here? In this process of passivity, there will be some corrosion resistance is occurred either by itself or by formation of a thin, invisible and highly protective film on the surface. So if you take it as a surface of a aluminum wire, a very thin film of very thin film of aluminum oxide is formed here. This is aluminum oxide, let us think. This is aluminum. So a very thin film of aluminum oxide is formed. This stops the <laughs> further corrosion of aluminum. This is called as, this film is insoluble and passive. Passive means it does not react with air. It does not react with environment. So it is called as passive. That character is called as passivity. So a metal is passive in certain environment and its corrosion rate is very very low. If the metal is passive, corrosion will be very very low. So if you change the environment, automatically the passivity also changes and it may be active towards the corrosion. So in certain environment it will be passive, in other environment it will be active. Active means the corrosion takes place. So passive means no corrosion. Active means more corrosion takes place. So it depends upon the environment. Very very important thing. Passivity of the metal is here dependent on the environment. So it depends upon the electrode potential of the coated metal and also the pH of the medium. These are the two important factors. One is the electrode potential of the coated aluminum metal and the pH. So for example, low carbon steel does not corrode in sulfur nitric, nitric acid. Low carbon steel, it will when you dip it in concentrated nitric acid, is not corrode. Why? Because it is having a passive film. But if you take dilute nitric acid, not concentrated, dilute means if you pour some water, in water you take some nitric acid, you will get dilute nitric acid. It does not form a stable passive film and therefore dissolves the steel. So what I want you to be clear is that mild uh, low carbon steel is not passive to nitric acid. It is passive only to concentrated nitric acid. But if it is a dilute nitric acid, again corrosion takes place. So, Passivity of metal depends upon the environment, which will be very very clearly understood. So some of the metals themselves, they form a protective oxide layer in air, water and uh, dilute acid. Example is aluminium. I told you about uh, our electric uh, wires. They are made up of aluminium. Why? Because it is highly passive. Thin, titanium, chromium, they form themselves a eh? strong passive film, right? So this is about the passivity of the metal. Now we shall see the very important topic called as galvanic series. We have already discussed electrochemical series. Now why are we discussing galvanic series means now in the electrochemical series we have only metals and non-metals but in uh, there are no alloys but in here in our regular usage we are using more number, of, more number of alloys. So in order to understand this react in and make them in an increasing order or decreasing order or make them in a certain order we require a series called a galvanic series. So this electrochemical series does not count for the corrosion of the metals. Nothing to do with the electrochemical series is not giving us about the alloys. Right? So it gives no information regarding the position of the alloys. Where we use the where are the alloys? Because in electrochemical series we are discussing metals, non-metals. What about the alloys? So we are using alloys, so we are using to be more practical series called as galvanic series has been developed. Right? This galvanic series.
information about the metals and also alloys also. So galvanic series, uh, why, why should we remove, understand this galvanic series? So you can select which metals can be joined and you can uh, select the metals having minimal tendency, minimal tendency to interact galvanically means which two metals can be joined, which two metals cannot, should not be joined, that you will be getting it. And it also will indicate the degree of protection applied to the uh, potential interactions. So, if you understand the galvanic series, you can see which metal can be joined. So, if you see here, magnesium is an anode. So, this is anode. Anode is most active. So, magnesium is most active. Least active is gold because this is acting as cathode. So an order is there. So if you see here, there is stainless steel, bronze, copper, brass, nickel, lead, steel, aluminium, zinc. So metals, along with metals, we have some alloys also. So this is more practical approach. So that is why we have defined a new series called as Galvanic series for our practical purposes. So in general, Apart from the materials in the galvanic series, the higher risk of the galvanic corrosion, which should be prevented by design, it implies that. So, if I am going to mix zinc, magnesium along with the gold, then what happens? Magnesium undergoes corrosion very fast. If the suppression is more, yes, corrosion will be more. If I mix brass and nickel, a brass rod, here a brass rod and a nickel rod, I mix both of them then the corrosion will be less because both of them are side by side. But uh, simply instead of brass, I have taken copper and nickel, then again increases. If I take nickel and bronze, more corrosion. Is it clear? So in the galvanic series, if the difference between the metals, side by side metals are less corrosion, prone to less corrosion, the Difference between the metal size is very high in the galvanic series, they are highly prone to corrosion. The anode metal, anodic metal is highly prone to corrosion. This point is very remembered. So, you should always prevent this by using some design, right? So, conversely, the farther one metal is from the other, the greater is the corrosion. So, this is about the galvanic series. Now, we shall discuss the differences between electrochemical series and galvanic series. So electrochemical series, it gives how we are getting only the electrode potentials. What about galvanic series, how we are getting by studying the corrosion of metals and alloys. Here, galvanic series, electrochemical series is obtained by measuring the electrode potentials. Galvanic series is obtained by studying the corrosion, corrosion of metals and alloy in seawater. Next, the position on the metal series is fixed, but the position in the given metal may change in galvanic series. In galvanic series, the position of the metal may change depending upon the environment. And it does not give any information about the alloys. Electrochemical series does not give no information. But here it includes alloys also, and hence thoroughly can be studied in detail. So, in order to study the corrosion, you should be very thorough with the galvanic series. And this series has non-metals. Electrochemical series include non-metals, but uh, here this series comprises of only metals and alloys only. Non-metals are not included in our galvanic series. Non-metals are not included. So, it predicts the relative displacement of tendencies. Which metal is going to displace which metal? That is what is described in our electrochemical series, which we have discussed in our previous law. Now, but here the galvanic series, it dip, dip, uh, predicts the relative corrosion tendencies. Here it is corrosion tendencies. Which metal will be corroded more? Means which metal acts as anode, which metal acts as cathode. So in order to understand corrosion, which series is more useful? Is it electrochemical series or galvanic series? Yes, obviously it is. Galvanic series is more useful to understand the surrounding tendencies. So these are the important differences between electrochemical series and the galvanic series. Now, 
the important point we have come to across. What are the factors that are affecting the rate of corrosion? Factors affecting the rate of corrosion. So, you have already told you, yes, this is the button cell. Hope you can see this, this is the button cell. In the batteries we are discussing. Now we will come back to the uh, topic, uh, the rate of corrosion. Rate of corrosion depends upon three important factors. First one is the nature of metal. Your metal, how is the metal? Second, nature of the environment. Right? Third one is nature of the product, corrosion product. So, what are the three factors affecting the rate of corrosion? Nature of the metal, nature of the environment, and the nature of the corrosion product. Now, first we shall see nature of the metal. In the nature of the metal, we should again see the first point is position of metal in the galvanic series. The metals are on the top position. They undergo corrosion with the high rate than the bottom position of metals. Means, if it is acting as more anodic, then it is corroded faster. So, for example, zinc undergoes faster corrosion than iron and aluminium and silver. So, zinc is on the top position, remaining are silver, right? Next, second important point is purity of the metal. If you are metal is pure, if it is pure, then low corrosion. Pure metals have low corrosion. So, in place, if there is any impurity, corrosion will be very high. Next one is surface of the metal. Generally, I told you, if there is smooth surface, no corrosion. If there is rough surface, again, it may collect some dirt and dust and it gives, uh, creates our OCG. OCG means oxygen concentration gradient will be different and uh, it is readily corroded. But a polished metal, Polished metal surfaces are non-corrosive. Next point is the ratio of anode and cathode area. Which area should be more? If there is a bigger cathode area and smaller anode area, then rate of corrosion increases. So what should be done then? Cathode area should be more. Electrons are generally consumed and corrosion rate increases. So, what you have to do? Reverse that to do. Means, small cathode area, large anode area, then no corrosion. The corrosion rate is slow. So, this is all we are discussing under nature of the metal. Under nature of metal, we have discussed about the position of the metal in the galvanic series, density of the metal, surface of the metal, is it uh, smooth? then low corrosion. If it is pure, low corrosion. If the ratio of anode and cathode area, if cathode is more and anode is less, corrosion is fast. If they are similar in the reverse, that is cathode is less and anode is more, then the corrosion rate is slow. So this is all nature of the metal. Now we will go for the second one, nature of the environment. Environment means the surrounding atmosphere where the metal is placed. So the first one is the temperature. If temperature increases, rate of corrosion increases. Very simple. Temperature increases, corrosion increases. Next one is humidity. If there is more moisture, rate of corrosion increases. So, uh, humidity increases and automatically rate of corrosion increases. Why? Humidity acts as a conducting medium. That is the reason behind that. And next, presence of any suspended particles. If there are more particles, then rate of corrosion also increases. So, in the nature of environment, temperature, humidity, presence of suspended particles. Next, fourth one, pH. If pH is more, corrosion is less. So, acidic medium, corrosion is more. Basic medium, corrosion is less. Clear? If pH increases, rate of corrosion decreases. Acidic medium, Enhances the rate of corrosion. That is important. pH is inversely proportional to corrosion. And the last one is the conductance of the medium. So, if there is any conductance, rate of corrosion increases. So, if the medium has any conducting atmosphere, then automatically pH of the, sorry, automatically the conductance, if it is more, then corrosion is also more. 
So, if there is more conductivity, then faster the ions can migrate between the anode and cathode. So, if there is any conducting medium, faster it will be, uh, it, it has speed up the corrosion rate. So, therefore, corrosion problem is more in sea water than in fresh water. In sea water, what are there? We have different salts. Salts means ions, cations and anions are there. So, if in sea water, if you dip the rod, rod it undergoes faster rate of corrosion when compared with a normal pure water. So, this is all about the nature of the environment. Last topic, theory factors is the nature of the corrosion product. Very simple and very tricky. Just observe carefully. If the product is non-porous, so no, there are no holes, are unstable, are unstable, means the product is not stable, then the rate of corrosion decreases. Non-porous and stable means rate of corrosion decreases. Unstable, the product is not stable, immediately the metal breaks down. Then also, no corrosion. Next. Uh, if it is porous and volatile, then corrosion rate will be increasing. Simple. Very clear. If it is non-porous or unstable, rate of uh, corrosion decreases. If it is porous, corrosion rate automatically increases. Volatile also, corrosion rate increases. This is all we have discussed in our previous slide. Right? During chemical theory of corrosion. We are going to go there and just see what I was saying or regarding this. So, these are all the factors which are affecting the rate of corrosion. So, only three main factors I told you. What are the three main important factors? Nature of the metal, nature of the environment, nature of the corrosion product. These are the three important factors. Out of them, again, we have divided uh, carefully and we have discussed in detail the remaining all the concepts here. These are all the factors affecting the rate of corrosion. Now, we shall see, we have discussed about what is corrosion, what are the types of corrosion, what are the theories of corrosion. And again, we have discussed about uh, what are the factors, what are the factors which are enhancing the rate of corrosion. Now, we have to see a problem, we have discussed in detail, in detail, what is the problem. Now we have to see what is the solution. How can we stop this corrosion? That is what we are here discussing about, what is corrosion control. How can we control this? So corrosion control can be done by using two methods. The first one is proper design and material selection. So if you have a very minor, a good design, and you have a very pure material, then corrosion can be controlled. And second one is called as cathodic protection. What this concept is very simple and very very important because I told you previously also, cathode is always protected. Cathode is protected. Anode is corroded. Anode is Corroded. So this one you should very 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 importantly you should understand. Cathode protected, anode corroded. So if you want to protect a metal, you should make it as a cathode. That protection is called a cathodic protection that we have to discuss. So these are the two important uh, yes, these are the two important uh, techniques for controlling the corrosion. So these are the solutions. Now we will discuss the first one, the proper design and material selection. In that we shall discuss about proper design. So, when you are taking the anodic and cathodic materials are used together, previously also I told you, the area of anodic material should be large. Anode should be large, cathode should be small. Next, the anodic part should not be coated because any damage in coating could cause rapid corrosion. While you are using any paint, the anodic part should not be coated. Because if there is any small crack, uh, immediately it starts a uh, faster rate of corrosion. Next, whenever you have to join two different metals. So for example, I have taken this is copper and this is aluminium. I should not, I have to join this. Generally avoid joining two different metals. If still, you have to join 
two different metals two dissimilar metals is unavoidable is unavoidable if you should that's all i said then you have to join it right then what you have to take this is an insulated fitting i have kept a we call them as washes right we keep them so if uh, the two dissimilar metals try to avoid two dissimilar metals if it is unavoidable you have to use of insulated fitting between them to avoid direct contact because there is no direct contact the current cannot pass the reaction is incomplete and hence it is productive so this is called proper design you are designing it very carefully next sharp angles means here look here L. This is very sharp here. It is sharp. So if it is sharp, what happens? It will cause corrosion. But here it is smooth. Here it is better. But here it is very sharp at the edges. Here, look here. The edges are very sharp. So this is not correct. You should not use this T. This shape only is correct. And which L is better? This is very bad because it is having sharp angles. I told you sharp angles, corners and edges should be avoided. Avoided. Next. So this also sharp. So no, this is better. Yes. So you in, for this reason only, if you want the L shape, T shape, and U shape, you have to set these better shapes. Now sharp angles should be there. Next, proper design. In this proper design, the fifth point we had to discuss is always prevent two different metals. Very good. If you have the same metal, no problem. But if you want to join two different metals, then you should see that there should be no service. Services means the gaps. So, see here. So, here they have welded completely. So is there a gap between the metals? No. So this is a good joint. Here also, one on the other, they have overlapped here. Overlapped the metals. And here, you see carefully, they have filled the gap with a, a metal. So that water or mud will not accumulate here. If they accumulate, what happened? Again, we get a problem called as oxygen concentration gradient. If the oxygen concentration gradient is apparent, immediately corrosion starts. But if you look here, so there is a gap here. See carefully, this is a gap. They have welded only on one side. What about the other side? There is a gap. If there is a gap, then there will be the moisture, water molecules they may enter or the may accumulate. So if they accumulate, where there is water, there is no oxygen. Where there is no oxygen, then starts the anodic reaction and then it starts the corrosion. And see here, they have used a different one way. They used a nut and bolt and have welded here, but the here there is a gap here. So these two are not correct. We should not use this. This is proper design. This is all about the proper designing. You should see that you should prevent the surfaces between the adjacent parts of the structure even in case of same metal. This is important. I have used the same color means same metal. I said don't use two different metals. So in the previous slide I showed you here. Two different This is aluminum. Don't use them. But still if it is unavoidable, use a insulation. So we use washers. Now I have taken the same metal. In the same metal, even if you want to join them, you have to see that there should be no surfaces, means there should be no gaps inside the metal, right? So this is all about the proper design. Now we will see the material selection. Which type of material should be selected? Yes, you have to choose a metal as pure as possible. Because I told you, if it is more pure, less prone to corrosion. If there are any impurities, it is more prone to corrosion. So you should see that impurity should not be there. You have to take pure metals. Second one is you have to take the noble metals. It is preferable. So if you want to build a house, build it with gold. Because gold is a noble metal. Instead of iron, iron means it starts rusting. 
If this gold I told you, you are not going to us. Sir, but we don't have money now, then go for iron silver. Then also we don't have money, sir, then go for iron. But don't build the house with a zinc. Why? Zinc is very much easily prone to corrode. Right? That is what is said. Noble metals are preferable because they are resistant to corrosion. Important point. And avoid contact of dissimilar metals. I have been saying since the topic beginning, if you join two different metals, automatically one will act as anode and another one will be cathode. So, in case that is unavoidable, then what you have to see, they should be as close as possible, so that there should be no junction. They should be as close as possible. In the previous diagram I have shown you here. So they should be as close as possible, right? So while taking the material selection, you have to see these points. First one is purity. You should be more pure. High purely, high pure metals will give us less corrosion. Next, noble metals. Prefer for noble metals. Next, third one is two dissimilar metals. You should avoid the contact. If it is a unavoidable, then see that they should be more as close as possible. Not means it implies not uh, one over the other. The thing is, in the Galvez series, take brass and bronze side by side. If you take brass and gold, corrosion starts. Next, this is all about the material selection and the proper design and material selection. The second one, here it is cathodic protection. This is the second method of control of corrosion. So, what is this cathodic protection? What is the logic behind this? I told you already that cathodic protection means we should act as force the metal to act as cathode. That's all. If you want to pass, you should read this. That's all. So, we are forcing you to see this. To be true. But you should yourself get the experience slowly. And you should involve in this lesson and then you should read. It will take some time. But if you can force a metal to be cathode, then cathode is always protected and anode will be corroded. Here, the basic concept is very simple. Cathode is protected, anode is corroded. So you should see that your metal, what we are going to protect, it should be acting as always cathode under any case. So for making it uh, like a cathode, we have two different methods. First one is called as sacrificial anodic protection. The second one is called as impressed current cathode. So these are the two techniques which you are using to force the metal to act as a cathode. I want to protect iron. Then I should make always iron as a cathode only. But you should not never make an iron as an anode. If you use anode, immediately iron gets corroded and your metal will be waste. So now we shall see the first part, sacrificial anodic protection. So the name itself says that one metal is going to sacrifice itself by making it a, as anode to protect the other metal. Means to protect one to protect the people of India, the military people surrounding the country, right? They are being killed. They are sacrificing themselves. So they are sacrificing and they are being protected. So we are forced to stay within the houses to protect ourselves from coronavirus. So we are the cathode. Coronavirus is the anode. So we should never touch it. Government touch it. That is the case here. So in this method, the base metal. The base metal means which metal is to be protected. That metal is called as base metal. So that base metal is connected to more active metal. That more active metal is called anodic metal. It is called sacrificial anode. So it is going to sacrifice to protect the base metal. Clear? The sacrificial anodic metal is going to protect the base metal. So only the um, active metal will corrode. So already I told you, this is anode. Anode will corrode, protecting the base metal. 
Since the anodic metal is sacrificing, this method is called as sacrificial anodic protection. Why are we call it as sacrificial anodic protection? Because it is sacrificing. So, uh, example, which are the sacrificial anodes we can use, sir, means magnesium and zinc. These are the good, important sacrificial metals we use. So, we shall see here like this. So, this is a uh, iron pipeline, gas pipeline we will take. So, if there are any corrosion takes place to this gas pipeline, what happens? Immediately, the gas leaks and it will cause an explosion also and it may take some life. So, I want to protect this iron pipe. So, what should I do? I always told you that I should make it as a cathode. Always make it as a cathode. You should force this iron to behave as a cathode. In order to make it as a cathode, we are using a magnesium here and we are connecting it to this pipe just then what happens magnesium always sacrifices slowly the magnesium anode will uh, give away the electrons and make the iron as all the cations will be attracted here this is in our cathode our pipeline becomes the cathode and this uh, sacrificial anode magnesium dies dies means it reacts mg plus 2 ions react after the uh, completion of this magnesium, again another metal is put inside here. That's all. This is called as sacrificial anodic protection. Very simple and very direct. This you have to protect. So make it as cathode. So iron I have to protect. So generally we will take zinc or magnesium. So here we have taken a magnesium rod and we have connected it electrically to this pipe to one end. Immediately what happens? It continuously supplies the electrons. So it is acting as anode. This is our anode. It is sacrificing it. So it is called a sacrificial anode. And this protection is called as sacrificial anodic protection. So magnesium metal is protecting the anode. So to save this, we are sacrificing this. So this is called as sacrificial anodic protection. The second method, uh, what are the uses of this? So how can we use this to protect the underground pipelines and cables from corrosion and magnesium seeds are generally inserted in water boilers to prevent the corrosion because water boilers we are uh, utilizing to generate steam at high pressure if there is any corrosion and there is any crack immediately the boiler will blast so to stop that generally we use we insert this magnesium sheets into the boilers and what happens if there is any base anything so our uh, boilers are made up of iron. So we are inserting magnesium. So magnesium is sacrificing itself to save the iron. Right? So this is a uh, use of uh, sacrificial anodic protection method. The second method is called as impressed current cathodic protection. Sir, always we have to check this magnesium is completed or not, we have to verify it. But instead of that, you can use the second method called as impressed current cathodic protection. So we are using some uh, direct voltage current, so opposite direction to nullify the corrosion current and convert the corroding metal from anode to cathode. Always you should see that the base metal which you have to protect should be made as an anode. It is trying to convert into anode. I want to change it from anode to cathode. Clear? So, in this uh, impressed current cathodic protection, we are using an opposite direction current to nullify the corrosion current and convert this metal. So, for example, this is our metal structure. This is our metal structure pipeline or uh, can say a tower. This is ongoing, undergoing corrosion. I want to make it uh, as a we are, making, we are forcing it. We are forcing it to behave as a cathode. We are forcing it to behave as a cathode by applying a DC current. So externally you are giving some current and making it cathode. That is called as impressed current cathodic protection. So usually the impressed current is derived from a DC source like battery which is insoluble anode like graphene. So here we take a graphite rod. So this is a graphite. So graphite rod is insoluble. So we will dip a graphite rod here. We will uh, uh, 
is a DC source, direct current, and on the input terminal, we give to our structure whatever we are going to protect it. So it will always force the structure to act as cathode. So the structure always acts protected, right? It is forced to act as a cathode. Cathode is always protected. Anode is corroded. So here we generally use anode graphite, carbon rod, that's not so costly. So this kind of protection technique is uh, useful for large structures, for long term operations. So big building we have to prepare. So constructed a large building. But uh, if corrosion takes place with the base, what happens? The building may collapse. So in order to stop that cor uh, corrosion, we use this type of uh, technique called impressed current cathodic uh, protection. So here I have shown you one more figure here. So this is our uh, carbon rods. They are acting anode and this is our pipeline which is going underground. So we are forcing it to act as minus means here we are making it to act as cathode. So production of petroleum gas pipelines and LPG gas pipelines. So petroleum gas pipeline and LPG gas pipeline, if there are any cracks or holes are taking place by the corrosion, what happens? It will lead to the uh, explosion or sometimes it may lead to take the lives of the people. So in order to stop this, what we are using? We are uh, using a source, a DC source, so that the negative terminal is connected to the pipe directly, forcing the any current, if it is there any uh, cathodic current, it will be converted, uh, converted and nullified. It will be nullified and uh, we will make this pipeline, this pipeline, it will be converted into cathode. The cathode, we are forcing it to behave as cathode. So we are calling it as impressed current cathodic protection. So this is the DC, so the positive terminal we are giving to the carbon rods. So carbon rods will be corroded, it is not a concern. But this pipeline is saved. So which one needs to be saved should be converted into cathode. Which one needs to be saved should be always converted into cathode because cathode is protected and anode is corroded.